Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Just another reminder that if you rather listen to us, go to our website, thestephennightshow.com. If you want to watch us and look at us, go to our YouTube channel, The Stephen Knight Show. Remember to comment, subscribe, and like, and tell a friend about it. Uh, now, last week we mentioned that our that we had a new Instagram page because our old one got hacked. Well, thankfully we got it back. So please go to the Stephen Knight Show on Instagram, follow us, comment on the stories that we post and whatnot. We love interacting with you. Now we're supposed to have a guest co-host, but she was a little partied out from this weekend. It was her birthday weekend, so uh, she uh, had to bail out on us. But she'll be back later on, um, later on in the show. So, uh, Chike, how was the weekend? How you feeling? You said you were getting over the flu or something? Man, I had to get a, a the the flu vaccine. You know, in medical, that's one of the many things that we have to get. Yeah, and I have to get it. You know, every year and. Um, every year it makes me sick because, you know, it's a little hair of the dog. And um, it made me, I, I was sick, like flu sick, like body was aching and everything else, the whole nine. But more so because this is season of coronavirus, I was a little nervous because my immune system was compromised. So I didn't yeah. want to go outside and I didn't want to be near anyone. So I stayed locked in all week. Actually, it was a little longer than a week. I had been home since Thursday. Oh, wow. And just stayed in, you know. But you say I'm you better. better now. Yeah, today was my first day back to work, that's and good. Um, I was feeling a little bit better, a little irritable, but better. Right. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. How about you, Naya? Good weekend. Uh, very good. I, actually, my allergies are kicking my butt. I, I don't think I have a cold or the flu or anything, but uh, my allergies out here on the West, man, they are kicking my butt. I don't mm. know what it is. So I loaded up on all this natural stuff it's you know, that new domicile you're living in a new area of the country brother yeah man it's 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 kicking my butt it's got my nate my eyes and my nasal cavity just going crazy you know so i'm taking a lot of honey and tea and some uh some nasal spray and some uh, uh eye drops yeah yeah i think you'll be you'll be better once you adjust to your new environment once you I hope your so. body gets i hope so because it because it, it is it is it is annoying and it really bothers my eyes it makes it hard for me to sleep a little bit yeah man yeah yeah, I, I used to suffer from bad allergies. So I know that's, that's crazy. So hopefully you will adjust soon. My weekend was cool. I was in D.C. Um, Savage, who was supposed to be our guest co-host. It was her birthday weekend. And so they did a lot of um, outdoor things. The weather was actually really nice. So it was supposed to rain, but it was really nice. Um, Friday night, it was like this outdoor kind of lounge. Um, and then Saturday, she had this um, brunch that was on her the rooftop of her building. And it was just cool, cool people, good food, the caterer. I gotta get her name so I can shout her out. She did amazing. I mean, crab cakes, um, steak and cheese rolls, um, chicken and waffles, fruit skewers, um, uh, shrimp and grits, just a whole bunch. She made it all herself. And so and it, everything was delicious. So I'm gonna um, shout her out next time when I remember her Instagram page. You, 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 you look like you might still be recovering too. Uh, was, <laughs> like you look like you might still be recovering too from the weekend. It was no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Thank God. No, no, I, you, you, it didn't put you in a food coma. <laughs> no, I, I, I um I recovered yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> I got back okay. early yesterday, so I got to recover. I had an actually really productive Monday. Mondays usually are my productive days to later on in the day, but I hit it running seven seven thirty this morning. Was gone, so so you know yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> but I want to remind everyone to make sure you go out and vote. Over 30 million people have already early voted. So that's a great sign. It's got a lot of um, enthusiasm about voting. Um, if you don't know what to do or you have questions about it, go to our website. We have a link on there where it gives you more information. But did you hear about it? it was some, I can't remember what city. Someone, you know, they had the early voting um, bins, absentee ballot bins, where you can drop it off and put it in a bin. Someone threw um, a burning newspaper in there and destroyed some of the, uh, they did it on purpose. Oh, and wow. So, yeah. I mean, people were, that so, voter suppression is no joke. No joke. Right. But yeah, make sure you vote. Make sure you vote. Well, our question of the day is. In Instagram, also, I don't mean, Instagram has been doing a really good job with that as well. Every time I log in, you know, they, they always have something about, you know, making yeah. sure you're registered or checking your status or yeah. where you can go. They've been doing a really good job. That that new CEO that they have, he's been doing a really good job. Yeah, Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook, they all have that, which is great because some people are clueless, you know what I mean? Yeah. And some, I think it was uh, Shaq, he said this was his first year voting. 
And he said he's not ashamed of, I mean, he's not proud of it, but he said this is his first year voting uh, at all. And so, Jeez. better late to never. Um, so our question of the day is, what is your best, not worst, flaw? What would you say, Chica? You know, they had um, the worst, my worst flaw is this, but what would be your best flaw? Probably, uh, I have this thing uh, with me and I always urge people to make a full assessment and then give me all the facts because I want all the facts. And sometimes, I, you know, I take that upon myself for other people. And then I think other people tend to get sick of me talking <laughs> and they tell me to shut up because <laughs> I have a tendency to give too much information. Um, so yeah, that would be my best worst flaw. Mm, okay. Now you incredibly hard. My best worst flaw. Your best, uh, not not worst flaw. Your best flaw. Right. My best flaw. Right. So my best flaw. Uh, <laughs> a what have question. I been told? What have I been told? Uh, I've been told that I'm stubborn. I've been told that. I, I, I think that can be a flaw, you know, the right, the wrong way, I guess. Um, yeah. Like I said, I think it's two sides of that stubborn coin. Like, like uh, Rosa Parks was stubborn, but that was like a, that was right. the right time to be stubborn, yeah. you know? Um, but I don't think they, I think I've heard that probably not because of the right thing. Maybe, I, maybe it was, I don't know. <laughs> but that's probably one of my, my flaws that, uh, that I'm constantly working on that if I'm stubborn, I want to make sure I'm being stubborn for the right reasons and right. not the wrong ones. Yeah. 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 Mine is my patience. I really have no patience at all. And I've been working on this most of my adult life. I have, my patience is just, <laughs> it used to be, used, it, mm. wait, 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 like standing in a line type of patience or people's ignorance type of patience? All of it. Really? <laughs> I'm easily annoyed. I'm easily annoyed. <laughs> I'm easily annoyed. Um, I just, yeah, I, I'm, I'm working on it. Like even yesterday, um, when I was coming back from from the airport, I had my Uber driver. Uh, shout out to him. His birthday is tomorrow. He, he turned seventy. This man told me every story in the book. <laughs> Driving slow, I'm thinking, Lord have mercy. But I had to because he was so, you know, he was happy. He's about to be his birthday. He's turning seventy, and he's about to go to the lake tomorrow. So I was like, let me just. But really inside out, because I literally will keep my headphones in my ear so people won't talk to you, even if I'm not listening to anything. But it didn't stop him. So, but shout out to him. Uh, you you are a you are a walking, living, breathing reality series. <laughs> right now, it used to be I was too nice. I used to be too nice. Like I had a hard time telling people no. I felt like I hurt their feelings, or they really needed needed it, or needed me, or whatever. Not anymore. I got. How'd you overcome that? getting burned so many times and feel and feeling imposed you know it, like it was i felt like i'm being put out because i'm too busy worried about somebody else you know what i mean um so yeah i've learned to say no i've learned to say no i mean i always say no but i've learned you know what i mean not to just say okay you know unapologetically no can i come can i come stay at your house for two months <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, why do people feel comfortable asking me this all the time? You know, how many I've had. <laughs> You're a good guy, man. I remember my mother. My mother said, "My mother just said years ago, do you think you own a hotel? Like, what is the problem? You know." So yeah, then I had so how one. Many, so how many of those did you have before you realized? Now wait a minute. Now it was probably the last one. It was a really good friend of mine, right? And it kind of threw me off. It was like right after the holidays, he had hit me up. <laughs> and he was he was kind of in tears. I never heard him cry. I'm like, what's wrong? And so he had some family stuff going on. So he wanted to stay in here. And I'm like, okay. I thought he meant for well, that day or that week. And then <laughs> eight months went by. I had, uh, I'm sorry. But my thing is, I gave hints like, I, you know, I don't like having roommates, but you can stay here if you need to for a minute. If someone keeps telling me I don't like having roommates, I'm gonna take the hint. You know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, tweet us at home and let us know what is your biggest not wor your I'm sorry, your best not worst flaw. All right, so um, coronavirus update real quick. You with over eight million cases um, worldwide, with over no, he, I'm sorry, domestically with over two hundred twenty thousand deaths. Um, the numbers are on the rise and they're really concerned that as the winter months come, people are going to be in the house more, 
they're not going to be, um, you know, like we did this weekend, going outside, having events, and doing things like that, um, that the numbers could go up even higher because a lot of people are getting what's called COVID fatigue. Um, and then, you know, the president, he is kind of, now he's after Dr. Fauci. He is, all his campaign stops, he's bashing them, dogging them out. And uh, they have, they're setting up the parameters because the last presidential debate is Thursday. And um, they have a hard time, this administration, discussing the uh, response to COVID-19. And so it'll be kind of interesting how they do it. They said they're going to have a, um, a mute on the mic this time. So they can't talk over each other, you know, like, like after the first time. What are your thoughts? I know, um, Chike, you were talking about the flu shot that you had and you were kind of nervous when you got sick. What are your thoughts on where we are with coronavirus? It's horrible. It's it's completely horrible. And, you know, <laughs> people don't want to do what is necessary in order to reel it in. And, you know, I get that people are sick of being in. I get that people don't, you know, some people just don't want to wear a mask. You know, I have no choice. I have to. I'm in a, at, in the mask most of my day. Yeah. Um, in my commute in, uh, all day while I'm there, and then on my commute back home. So when the times that I'm inside my walls are the only times that I don't have a mask on my face. But, you know, with things being as bad as they are, um, we're going to have to go far left in order to be get, to get right again. And um, I am okay with having to dive into the extreme in order for things to be leveled out. So I'm willing for a mandate because people just don't want to wear them. And I get it and I understand, but things aren't going to get any better that way. You know, I had a dude get on the train and this is what he did. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell is that protecting? Yeah. What the I, hell is that protecting? I saw this man take his shirt and put it over his. What the face hell is that? Yeah, that's all that's <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> so you know, I mean, I, again, I get it, but you know, we we got to do better. And the yeah. only way we're going to do better is if they're like concrete rules to keep people in line until we can, as they say, lower the curve. Yeah. What about you, Naya? The question is, where, am I am I am I kind of shocked about where we are, or how? Well, do I feel well about where are you with it, and do you or do you feel like you have the COVID fatigue, where you're just over all of this, and it's hard for you to, uh, you know, follow the yeah. guidelines that they're they're you know recommending? Yeah, no, it's not hard for me to follow the guidelines, um, which which I think the guidelines are just pretty much put put a mask on, right? Uh, you know, and, and wash your hands. No, it's not hard for me, and for the people who are having difficulty with this. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of like Chica. I don't, I don't really get it. I don't understand why that's such a big thing. Other than people feel like their their liberty is being being snatched from them. You know, I hear a lot of people make this comment saying that they don't want to be in a you know communist state and all that. Like, well, I don't, I don't understand what that has to do with. This is a health issue. This has nothing to right. do with you know. But it's it's more more a health health issue than it is anything else. So. Um, I don't know. No, it's ridiculous to me. I've seen people do those same things that you guys have just mentioned and uh, even worse. It's easy for me. I just throw my mask on. I go to the gym. I throw my mask on. I'm out in the store. I throw my mask on. It's not difficult for me at all. Yeah. It's not. How about this? How about this, Stephen? If you don't want glass in the bottom of your feet when you leave your house, you put shoes on, right? Right. Yeah. That yeah. simple. You know, I'm, I'm actually gotten used to taking my mask with me everywhere I go. I will say that I was in Destin, Florida, two weekends ago. And, you know, Florida, they don't have any kind of mask mandate. They've opened the state back up. You would think, if you went to Florida, you would think it was business as usual. Some people wear masks, especially that part of Florida. Because I heard Miami, they're still very strict. I know their, their governor, I mean, their um, mayor, he's very, you know, pro-mask. But um, in Destin, I mean, first of all, it's Trump City. Trump everywhere. You see Trump everywhere. Like, but anyway, but they... They're not really big ma on masks, but I'm, in D.C., I mean, almost everybody had a mask. I, I don't think I, I saw anyone that didn't have a mask, you know. Um, even when we were at the brunch thing, we were outdoors, people still had their mask on. They would take it down, you know, if we were social distance, but they don't play up there. So it's just interesting um, 
people just not realizing wearing a mask can protect and, and reduce the, the spread of this thing and help us get back to normal where we can, you know, kids go to school, people can go to work and things like that. So wear your mask, people. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Well, let's talk about this story everybody's been talking about, the Black Ink Crew of Chicago. So we have Ryan Henry and Anthony, Anthony Lindsay. They've been best friends since they were in high school, I believe, at least um, 12 years. And so, you know, they both um, got their claim to fame on Black Ink Crew. Well, apparently uh, Anthony was battling cancer um, which he beat, but he is now, he's seen through text messages from his baby mother that Ryan and them have been sleeping together for a year and a half. Ryan is also the godfather of their son. And so um, Anthony took the social media and put it out there. And so over the weekend, Ryan addressed the rumors and he owned up to it. He said he heard a lot of people, including um, Anthony and his, and his child's mom, you know, because it was happening while he was with her as well. And uh, he had like a 17 minute video just going on discussing it. He said, I heard a lot, I hurt people that I care about badly. Um, I disrespected myself and my family. He also said he made a tox toxic choices when he was in a dark place when it happened, um, but he did say that he apologized to his friend, Anthony, about the incident. So with Ryan and now the Nina, who is the baby mother, she's come out overnight and released a video too. And they say that this is already two weeks ago, they they all had a conversation about this. So it's not like he just found out about it, like, you know, as it hit the, it hit the internet. But um, she also said that she doesn't want people thinking that he is the victim, um, Anthony, because he was apparently abusive to her um, during their relationship, and she posted a, a picture of where she had bruises on. Well, Anthony since had come out overnight, <laughs> and he re released this um, the incident report, the criminal incident report that showed where there was a domestic violence uh, situation. They were both going after each other, but he was listed as the victim. And so I was interested because we posted the um, videos on our Instagram page, and a lot of women actually had Nina's uh, back saying that if Anthony wasn't treating her right, uh, why is she shocked that he stepped out? But then people were saying, the, gym, the men were like, what happened to bro code? You know, I'm battling cancer and you sleep with my baby mom and you're, we were best friends. So Chike, who do you think is in the wrong in this situation? Um. I have a tendency to look at things from a different lens. And I do know that when people are in situations like that, all right, so the female who was, I'm going to say neglected, um, probably was feeling some type of way. And she probably needed a shoulder to lean on, which is probably his best friend, which normally happens. And that shoulder turned into something else. And I understand probably how that could happen. But again, there is bro code and you don't do that. But I understand how something like that could happen. Um, never should there be a situation where something turns violent. They sh that shouldn't have happened. But um, I think all the, all the ingredients kind of lend itself for this to happen. Uh, in, in, in any event, I'm sure the producers are happy. This makes good fodder for the show. It, it's definitely going to be a good season whenever they uh, do discuss this. Uh, but uh, yeah, this I, I don't I can't I don't know. I don't know. I tend to if it was me, if I was the one, the victim, you know, having the cancer and experiencing that situation, I have a tendency to clean my hands and walk away. But you do have a show to do, so you're you're now attached to this because of business too. So it gets a little messy. It's a little tricky. A little. I don't <laughs> have anything else to offer. <laughs> no, you. Yeah, I can't say who's right, who's wrong or who's right, but I know they're on TV. But you know, some stuff you just shouldn't make it out to the public. Some stuff needs to just stay private, and 
yeah, I got to sort that out. You know, they all, they all are involved in some way or the other. And, uh, you know, if they really, if those guys are really friends ever, then uh, it probably should have stayed a, a private thing and they should have used some other fodder for, for the reality series. But I, I, I'm with Chica. I understand how it all can happen. I understand how these things happen. Usually when women or men, you know, uh, meet someone's friends, those friends are usually friends for a reason. They're usually like each other. They're usually similar type of people. So it's not too, too distant of a thought to find that someone could easily like someone's friend. Um, you know, because these are people who are similar. <laughs> these are guys who are friends for a reason, you know, so that's happened. I've seen that happen too many times, too many times. So yeah. I'm not surprised by that, but you know, this is one of those things they probably should have kept, probably should have kept with each other. Do you think if, if that were you and you're in that situation, could you, could, is that friendship over? Like, could you all ever I was just way? about I was just about to say, you know, I did have a situation like that and I was the one with the friend that slept with the significant other and um yeah, I threw both of them suckers in the trash. Yeah. Yeah, I could I can't deal. Yeah, it, it, for me, it, I'm not that way. I it, it, and and, I and let me go a little bit further. Yeah. I want to go a little bit further and explain to people the situation as it came to me. So she came to me telling me that he came on to her and then he came to me and told me that she came on to him. So it was a situation that they created where I didn't know who to believe. Okay, so both y'all going to trash. It's both y'all nasty whores. Bye. Yeah. I'm just the kind of person I really believe in loyalty and mm -hmm. I, I, it'd be a wrap. I mean, I would have nothing for you. You know, eventually I would forgive you. Yeah. But I, I could not, because I, I wouldn't be able to trust you. You know what I mean? And then you, and, I think and, situations like that, it makes you think about what other things have you done exactly, behind my back or exactly. what other, you know, because if the, you were best friends for 12 years, you don't think about my best friend. I would exactly. never, ever and, think. Part, and part of the code, part of the code, Stephen, for me and my friend, and that was my best friend. And part of the code for us is we've had conversations in the past about situations like that. Mm -hmm. And it was four of us, we were friends together. And it was, our guy code was, if a chick ever came on to you and that was, you know, with someone else, you better make a beeline to ride her out. That was the code. Oh, you were and with you were with her when it happened, Chike? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And because uh, you did not follow that code, that means you were foul to me. Because yeah, it, yeah. We, we've I, talked it, about this, and you didn't follow the guidelines that we had set up, and you that to me that means you had something to hide. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna be friends with someone if that's the case. If it's someone who's doing that while I'm with the person, I, I wasn't clear on that. So, so he was sick, and he was with the woman when that happened. Yeah, they were together. He was battling oh. cancer, and they would get it in for a year and a half. Oh he yeah, found, yeah. He no. found out in text message because uh, Ryan texts Nina and said, "I miss you." I oh yeah, no, 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 that, that's, yeah, that's not, that's probably not appropriate for sure for your friend to do. I was thinking it was like something that, you know, he, it was a moved on situation and he got with her after, yeah. you know, and he just happened to be sick during the time that he was getting with her, but it was after them. That's what, that's what I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't, that's, that's, that's not, that's probably not appropriate. You know, it's not. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Dunsies. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Well, look, let's take a quick break. We have a few more uh, hot topics. Find out why Kim Kardashian was very uh, transparent in a recent interview about working with the Trump administration. We'll talk about that and a lot more when we come back.